What's going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Today is the day we're gonna build this custom pergola for my brand new solar setup that we just got because I need to get these panels ready to go. So if you guys haven't seen my brand new kit, please go check that video out. Link is gonna be right here. But nonetheless, we gotta start off with getting these six by six anchors into some concrete as you can see they uh, should help anchor this thing down into the ground a little bit nonetheless we're gonna take some five gallon buckets we're gonna be digging them into the ground again filling them with concrete throwing those things in and then once those are setting and everything's mixed up I'm gonna start prepping the uh, 6 by 6 by 12 posts and the 6 by 6 by 8 posts which are going to be the lean-to style pergola right so we're going to have the 8 foot sections like right here and the 12 foot section in the back to give me a lean-to style for the bifacial panels to be able to take the uv rays off of the reflection of the white fence it should work perfectly so again first things first i do need to get the concrete mixed but before i do that i got to get my pop-up tent set up right here somewhere in the driveway because it's starting to sprinkle out and it's supposed to rain like all day but again i haven't had much to choose from the last couple days because it has been like 100 degrees outside and today is actually pretty decent i can deal with about 75 degree weather so i've been mixing in this bucket and filling up the orange buckets as i go as you can see i got four of them done right there and then i'm just kind of plopping this thing in the center once i get the bucket full Sorry, a little hard to do with one hand, but just kind of lift it up and down a bit. Get it somewhat level, and you want it to kind of stay on the top. If possible, you don't want it to sink in at all. So I'm just trying to get it in the center of the bucket. And then obviously I can level the pole once it's in this uh, setting. That looks pretty good, and I have to go to Home Depot and grab a couple more bags this is taking two bags per bucket i got three more buckets so i need four more bags and i got like half a bag there so i'll have a little bit left over but not much all right these are all done i just have to let these two dry these six are dry for the most part i was just spraying off the uh black holder there i really only need to work with like four or so for right now i'll get started with that but i do need to prep these six by sixes right so i need to basically cut in an inch on each side about six inches deep and i'm going to have the two by eight by twelves and two by eight by tens basically going right into it just a little bit so there's a little bit of an overhang on the outer edge so more or less going to look like this when all eight of them are done again this is to put the uh, two by eights there kind of sitting on the notch and then this right there we're coming up at a 45 going in between the posts so i have a beam on each side of the pole I got the skill saw, it can only go so deep, so you gotta use the hand saw to finish off the middle, cause uh, yeah. All right, I got four of them done. This is gonna get me started on the first half of the actual uh, pergola, so that should be enough for now. These guys, I need to get four of them set. I'm gonna start with two in the back over there, and it's freaking raining right now, so I don't wanna walk out there and show you, but you can see I got my tape measure, maybe. Let me zoom in, Does this work? Ah, I never use a zoom, but my tape measure is right there. That is about 14 feet out, actually. Um, so I think I'm going to get pretty close to the fence over there, but I kind of want to stay like a foot off of it, maybe two feet off of it, and then come out. So again, 14 feet right about there. All right, check it out. Got one of the poles in here. It's all leveled up, and I have it marked with this thing right here. I have this on the top of the bucket and it's 42 inches up to this line. So I got the bucket down about three feet in the ground or I think it was around the frost line, 32 inches, right? That's kind of where I was aiming for, but it's somewhere in there. Now the goal is to get all of them the same depth, right? So I got this one all set. Now I got to dig this guy down. I had to go over from the center of this one, eight foot six inches and then i'm gonna have to uh come four feet off the fence i ended up going four feet because my sprinkler line ended up being like at the three foot mark which is probably right here so i didn't want to cut it and i'm hoping that i don't interfere with the other sprinkler lines going four foot off the fence but this is where the next one is going to be placed all right i got a game plan now that it stopped raining i was able to dig the second hole i got the bucket all the way down there and i actually set up my laser level this thing is awesome and again top of the bucket is 42 inches like i said so i put it on that line and then i'm measuring down to the top of the bucket and you can see right where that green line hits you can faintly see it exactly 42 that's exactly what i need to do 
the rest of the way down. Now I just need to uh, level this out. It is actually center to center, eight foot six. That's exactly what I wanted and four feet off the fence. Now I just gotta backfill it, make sure it's level and we're good to go. All right, so I just laid those buckets out where they're gonna be going. Now I need to get this right here. I got a rock right in the place of the eight foot mark, but I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna turn this guy on. I'm gonna make it go vertical. It's an automatic level. So I need to spin this and there we go. See the line on my hand. All right, so now what I need to do is put this flat against the pole, like so. Measure where the vertical line is off the pole. What is that, about four, a little over four and a half. We'll just say a little over four and a half. And I'm hoping that I could see that green line. Ooh, I can. That is so faint. Oh man, that's so faint, four and a half right there and that's how we get it nice and square and a few days later this is what we're left with we got all the poles in the ground eight of them to be exact all nice and lined up now the hard part's done that was obviously the worst part of it at least in my opinion right now the top part's easy just screwing wood lifting it up but getting these all dug level squared up that was uh yeah that was challenging anyways we're gonna be getting the top part done now and yeah i'm gonna have to get probably the 12 footers connected here then do a eight and a half footer in the middle and then another 12 footer on the other end and i'll cut the ends off after it's already in place i think that's probably the best way to do it just so i'm not like off by the size at all Okay, banged out the, I guess we'd call that the horizontal maybe. Now I gotta do the vertical. So I think this is the best way to do it. I took a string and I tied it from the front to the back to make sure both these poles were straight and it's exactly eight feet from pole to pole. Now what I'm going to do is lay a two by eight by 12 across the top. I'm gonna get it centered like between the obviously uh, like hang, overhanging about two feet and about two feet that way. And then we're going to, uh, get this tilted up and I'm gonna draw a couple lines so I know where it needs to be notched. Then I'm gonna notch it, I'm gonna test fit it and that's gonna be my template piece to cut the rest. So let's do it. So that worked out fantastic. Unfortunately, I need to go grab nine more of these two by eight by 12s because I'm gonna have, this is basically as wide as the panel is. I actually went around and uh, separated these last night, but I think I'm gonna need to put another brace in the middle just because I want to make sure that this thing is good throughout like the snowy season as well even though I'm gonna clean them off I don't want to have that big of a span so I am gonna put another uh, joist basically right here there you know all the way through the middle of this and I did keep the last one off because I'm gonna have nine sections so I have another one that's gonna be going about right here and then obviously splitting that one in the middle as well but I have that off because I need it for the template. I need to cut the other nine. So I got to go run to Home Depot. I got to get nine more of those. And then uh, we should be able to button this thing up. The only last thing I'm going to have to do is take some of these uh, four by sixes right here. And I'm going to have to cut them at a 45 degree angle and put them basically from like here up into the middle of this and brace it through there with another five inch lag bolt and just lag everything together to kind of tighten up everything so nothing moves. All right, we're almost down to the end. Just getting the final joists here cut up and thrown up. As you can see, it's more condensed over on this side. But the main thing I'm trying to show you guys right now in this point of the video is look at that sun. When the sun gets past these trees, because it kind of shades it right now where the, uh, you know, where the sun sets or the path line of the sun rather, once it gets past that point, it's gonna nail the back of these bifacial panels perfectly. That is the best scenario, 1000%. All right, so we got all the boards up on top and now this is uh, the next day or so. And I actually need to start mounting these braces right here. What I planned on doing is actually, let me get up on the ladder, screwing it down with like a three and a half inch lag bolt right through the top, makes it nice and sturdy. But this is the only one I'm actually going to be mounting for the time being because I am waiting for some solar panel brackets and then I will space these out evenly with the solar panels, throwing them up on top and getting the brackets on and everything. I need to do it all at once. And then also I need to lag bolt these guys that I'm cutting and jamming up in between the uh, two by eights here. 
which is uh, actually coming out pretty nice. So the way I'm doing that, I actually cut a two foot section, 45 degree angle cuts on each side, and then um, it's a bit tight here. So what I did was shave the back side, as you can see, break it off and wedge it up inside, which is pretty nice. So this right here is what I'm doing. Again, 245 cuts, and then I'm basically cutting it a half inch across, and then I'm just gonna chip it out with my hammer and then smack it up into place. And yeah, they should all have nice angle cuts when we're done. And then uh, the only other thing I do have to do is one more board across the side here, basically going from this beam or this pole over to this pole. I'm just gonna do a square out more or less so it looks a bit nicer from the side view and from the other side as well. We just got all the braces done. I got all these 45 angle cuts nice and secure. Got it all lagged. Got this board obviously straight across here as you guys could see. Now it looks a bit better when it comes to uh, being able to hang out under this because again I'm going to be using this pergola, some lawn furniture and stuff, not just completely solar stuff, right? I didn't want it to look like total ass and just look like only a solar thing right here on my side yard. But nonetheless, now we're good to go. Everything is good. Again, all the angles are secure on every pole. Everything's lagged front and back side all the way around. So this thing is freaking sturdy as hell. It ain't going nowhere. Super excited about this. Now, the only thing we got left to do is try to get these panels up. I gotta secure these down as I go. I just got this one in the middle there, this one and the next one all where they need to be from center to center or about 22 and 3 eighths here and then uh, center to center 44 and 5 eighths right here so that panel should fit perfectly center on this beam and center on this beam and I'm gonna have to do them again one at a time clip them to the joist and go from there I am gonna caulk in between the panels I'm not gonna do a unistrut style I want these to be slammed together flush and siliconed against each other there's been plenty of videos out there that people have done this and it works perfectly fine so I'm assuming this is gonna work good but nonetheless let's get a panel up here and see how it fits so this is one out of 16 panels we're going to have here on the uh, pergola, right? Now I got to stand up on this and try to get this thing up there on those though breaking it. That actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I mean the panel's definitely heavy, but having these things to stand on and kind of slide it up there made things so much easier. So now I got to get it all the way up to the top with the 12 foot ladder, get it mounted and then get the other one right under it and against it and then I should be able to go left and right with everything. Okay, two panels up. As you can see, again, I got those braces here so they don't fall apart. And I do have these like four foot, uh, actually these might be five feet, five feet uh, seat clamps, right? So these seat clamps actually will help me straighten out these boards. So this one was a bit bowed. So I pressed it up against the middle one and then I hooked on the outside of this one over to this one and squared them up so they were exactly 44 and 5 eighths edge to edge, exactly what I need so these panels are square. And then I'm gonna get two other sets up here and make sure the whole thing's completely square before I screw this all down. All right, I got four panels up and none of them are actually screwed down because obviously I wanna square it up and make sure they're dead center on all these braces before I do so. I'm kind of pinching them together with those small seat clamps right there. And then obviously you guys know the contraption I just went over, but trying to get this thing all situated, then I can screw down one panel and silicone the uh, rim of it and then smash the other one next to it and continue all the way down. I just wanted to get all four together. That way the thing was completely square all the way across and I could just continue left to right. That should be, uh, yeah, it should work fantastic. All right, let me uh, just double check and start screwing this thing down. All right, I got some of the screws in and I just put a bead of silicone all the way across this uh, panel and I kind of blobbed it up in the corner there just so there is a weather tight seal in between them and I don't have any leakage in between. Not that it really matters, but if we're hanging out under here during a party or something, I don't wanna have any uh, issues with water. So why not use this thing as a roof, right? All right, let me squish this together and see how it comes out. Funny enough, it started raining on me yesterday. So this is the following day. I got four panels up here mounted and good to go. Again, I got them siliconed in the middle. And the main reason for the silicone, it wasn't really to keep these things completely weather tight. I don't really care about that. I'm not gonna be in here, you know, when it's raining out. If we are in here for a party or whatever, that's cool. But at the end of the day, you don't wanna have these completely against each other with no like uh, 
no wiggle room, right? So like I wanted them to be against each other, but have a little bit of a cushion to be able to expand and contract that caulking that's in between the panels. So now, nonetheless, I need to get the rest of these guys mounted on this side, and then I'll work my way on this side, but I got all these joists spaced out and bolted down, as you guys can kind of see, maybe, maybe not, but nonetheless, these ones are good. Those ones I still have to mount. So let's get these up and uh, yeah, see how it goes. All right, how's that look? Got half of it done. Got six more panels put on this side, but as of right now, we got 10 fully up, all secured. It looks friggin' fantastic, and I actually voted against siliconing in between the panels. I, uh, I kind of wish I didn't do this one, but I'm just siliconing along the actual beam itself to help secure it down and whatever. I don't really care if it's weather tight between. I just didn't want to have to deal with the oozing out and coming into the uh, face of the panel because I already had to wipe this one off from both sides. So yeah, I didn't want to deal with that. But nonetheless, everything looks great. So now I just got to get the rest of them up there. But obviously every time I try to do something, it starts to freaking rain. And a few hours later, the clouds moved that way. And I got it all done. How amazing does this look? Now I only got a few cuts left to do around the outer edges to make it like look a little fancy and I gotta lop off the extra stuff here, but nonetheless, this came out freaking awesome. I'm super excited about it. And everything's all mounted, clipped. I just have to wire everything up. And not to mention the sun, look at this. It's nailing the bifacials, which is amazing. So I should be able to get sun all the way through the day. Definitely more than 12 hours in the day, which is amazing. I don't know how much it's going to be, but we're going to have to test that and see. Nonetheless, what do you guys think about it? Leave it in the comments below. I appreciate all you guys for hanging out. Hopefully, you guys liked watching this. I'm going to save wiring it up for another video because this one would be literally an hour and a half long video, and I just don't have time for that. So you guys, have a good day. Catch you soon. Peace out.